Before the Big Bang, everything in the universe existed in an infinitesimally small region of space. Then, something happened. This minuscule point grew an octillion times over in less than a trillionth of a second. Space continued to expand and gradually cool off, and 300,000 years later, the first atoms condensed from this cloud of energy. After another 200 million years, these first atoms clumped together to form the first stars. Then these burnt out and blew up, spreading new atoms which in turn clumped together to form new stars. In 10 billion more years, this process created 100 billion trillion stars in the universe. On at least one of these stars, complex, self-replicating molecules started to form. These molecules started clumping together, forming more and more complex forms through evolution. Another 4 billion years takes us to the present, where life has become complex enough to reflect upon the origins of the universe. Life, or more specifically, modern astrophysicists, can now tell us this cosmic story. They also believe they know how it ends. After a quadrillion more years, all the energy in the universe will have been used up. The heat death of the universe. It's unclear if this will be the actual end, or somehow we'll get a sequel, with the process somehow repeating. This certainly makes for a grand story, but it seems incomplete. It paints a beautiful setting and introduces a character. Life. But this character comes about through pure happenstance and has no chance of affecting the outcome of the story. In other words, in this story, life has no purpose. But not all scientists share this view. In particular, physicist and former MIT professor Jeremy England disagrees. In his 2013 paper, Statistical Physics of Self-Replication, England lays forth a theory outlining how a fundamental force of nature gives rise to life for a specific purpose. So, the purpose of life according to England's theory? Dissipating heat. This probably isn't the grand reveal you were hoping for, but it's more than just a pedantic answer. One of the most fundamental laws of science is the second law of thermodynamics. It tells us that over time, the entropy of a system increases. You may have heard entropy called a measure of disorder, but it's more nuanced than that. It's really a measure of how spread out energy is in a system. The more energy spreads out, the more entropy, and the less usable energy. Take for example a stack of firewood. The chemical bonds in the wood contain a good deal of energy. Once we light this stack, the energy that was once confined within the wood is forever dispersed in heat, ash, and smoke. It's the constant increase of entropy which foreshadows the end of our universe. Eventually, all energy will be completely dispersed. No usable energy anywhere. Not a hint of light nor life. The heat death of the universe. But while the flow of entropy will eventually lead towards this end, it is also the fundamental force which creates life. Through complex statistical analysis, England shows that when there's an external source of energy, a system not only can, but almost certainly will spontaneously produce self-replicating structures. Life. Thus, life isn't some rare, random event, but instead the inevitable outcome of the rules of physics. As England puts it, you start with a random clump of atoms, and if you shine light on it long enough, it should not be so surprising that you get a plant. While you'd have to shine that light a very long time, the logic is that a self-replicating molecule increases entropy more than a regular molecule. And self-replicating molecules can and will spontaneously occur in the right conditions. The fundamental forces of nature favor increasing entropy. Thus, eventually, these self-replicating molecules, also known as life, take over. Once this gets started, Darwinian evolution explains the rest. But instead of survival of the fittest, there now seems to be a more fundamental rule. Survival 
of the most entropic. England doesn't touch on the implications of his work, but there are many. Perhaps the constant drive for consumption is more than societal conditioning or biological urges. It may be this fundamental drive to increase entropy that is secretly driving our actions. It also makes the Fermi paradox more stark. England's theory tells us that life should exist almost everywhere, and that the ultimate purpose of any alien life will be the consumption and dissipation of energy. The logical outcome seems to be space-faring aliens, aggressively expanding outward, something we thankfully see no evidence of. Perhaps because unlike a fire which burns its fuel to exhaustion, life, specifically intelligent life, has the ability to control their rate of consumption. The winning strategy for increasing entropy in the long run might not be mindless aggressive expansion, but rather intelligent, sustainable use of energy already readily available. This fills in some details to our cosmic story. Rather than an uninvolved observer, the fundamental forces of nature created life in order to accelerate the even distribution of energy. And while we drive towards that ending, the details are far from certain. Will humans make it to the end, using up the final energy imbalances of the universe, or will we burn up our resources like a flash in a pan? Will other life leapfrog our ability to consume energy and increase entropy, such that it flips the pages towards the eventual ending quicker than expected? If Jeremy England's theories hold the test of time, many believe he will be remembered as the next Darwin. It gives life a much needed backstory and tells us that we do have a fundamental purpose. Of course, we're still left with, what's the purpose of the universe? This we may never figure out. As you, an agent of entropy, how about furthering your purpose by dissipating some energy and clicking the like and subscribe buttons? Does England's work answer a fundamental question about life? Or is it just passing off the question to a different level? Please let me know in the comments below. And of course, thanks for watching Rather Be Squidding. I'll be continuing to explore the un and under known and sharing what I find back here. I hope to see you next time.